Hello, my name is Robert Boyd, and I'm a lecturer and director of School of Business Interns. And I'm here today to talk to you about resumes. First thing is, why am I doing this presentation? The first thing is, the School of Business wants you to be successful in finding both an internship and your first job out of college. Resumes are an evolving process, and there's no definitive best way to construct a resume. However, there's many things you can do wrong. And I like to reflect back that many employers that I have spoken with have commented on the variations in resumes from Geneseo. Some of them are great to, oh my, this is really bad. And what we have found is there needs to be a level of consistency in what you're delivering. We know what employers are looking for. So this video today is going to attempt to communicate the best. The things that we've learned here are what's people got, which has helped people get amazing internships and fantastic jobs. We'd like all of our students to have a great resume. So let's keep going and start with a very basic question. Um, what do you hope to achieve by your resume? Hmm. A response from the recipient, a phone call or an email to discuss your qualifications further. It's not intended to get you a job. It's only intended to get you a call back. And when we start going a little deeper into this, you have less than a minute or a millisecond if it's read electronically to tell your story. Why would a firm want to have a further discussion with you? Obvious one, you have the skills they're looking for. So if they're looking for a set of skills and you have those skills, they'll want to talk to you. You have already demonstrated success in some of the things you've done in the past. And success takes on many things. It may be small, but you do want to communicate the success. You have something unique to offer, okay? A resume should not include everything you've ever done. It should be incredibly focused on your skills and accomplishments relevant to the job you are seeking. That becomes a key thing. It's for what you are looking for. How do you construct a resume to do that? The number one reason a firm will call you back is that you have the education, experience, and skills they're looking for. So the first step is to find out what the employer is looking for. So you need to read that job posting, go to the firm's website, what are the skills that they're looking for? They're all laid out there, okay? So then once you identify the skills, you can move on to your resume. So you need to take time with that. So go to the websites, look at the requirements they're looking for, what makes successful people, read the job posting, know what they're looking for. And you gotta be somewhat specific, okay? You, you can't just have all these random skills, prioritize them. So now that we know that, you'd say, well, isn't every firm the, the same? So that if I'm doing an accounting resume or finance resume or marketing or HR or whatever, aren't they all the same? No. If you focus on skills at a high level, they may seem similar. But if you go deeper, they are different. I assure you, after almost 40 years of work, that firms may sound alike and the top level may sound similar, but they are not the same. They're looking for a slightly different set of skills. So focus on your resume, what the company wants, not what your message is, but what are they looking for. You must distinguish yourself from others while demonstrating that you have in skills and experiences they seek. This is a process. This is not just something you sit down and write in 10 minutes. Remember, what do you want? you want people to talk to you further, okay? So oftentimes your resume is reviewed electronically and they're programmed to look for specific skills. So 
let's just keep going as to what can I summarize so far? Customization of one. There is no such thing as a single resume that suits all purposes. Your resume is going to have a basic structure, but it needs to be tailored to the specific firm you're looking for. That becomes important as you're doing this. Once we have the base, then tailoring it slightly to the different firms is critical. Your re resume needs constant updating as you build your skills, as your resume is reviewed by others, making adjustments, fine-tuning it. When you, send, when you get an interview, what was it that helped you get it so that you can keep going? A, a few basics before we get too far along. And these are sort of the rules of the, the, the game. One page, okay? One page, never more, full stop. Do not go below. There's no exceptions at this point in life ever. Never, one page. Once you get a lot more experience, 15, 20 years, you can think, and that's think about two years, but not before. Make use of the entire page. Okay, move dates to the right side margin, align items, eliminate white space, adjust margins. It's proportional. What you're communicating here is your written skill. Out, one font throughout, proportional fonts. Consider aerials or other sans serfs. No colors, do not use color on your resume. Avoid underlining and italics, they just Confuse the situation. Don't need it. Clean and crisp. Use bold, but only when needed. Spacing should be consistent and allow for a smooth read. The next one should go without even saying, but I can't tell you how many resumes that I looked at have spelling and grammatical errors. Spelling errors should never, ever occur. You run spell check. Grammar and word selection also need to be checked. It may be spelled correctly, but it's not communicating the skill. There can't be a spelling and grammar mistake on your resume, period. So these are the basics that we're getting into. So pay attention to these as we more move forward. More basics. Do not have an objective statement. That, that doesn't go in a resume despite what you may have learned. It goes in the cover letter. No relevant coursework. If you have a degree in accounting or finance or marketing, everybody knows what you're taking. Okay? Um, adjectives need to be used cautiously. I would include words, reflect words included by the firm in their position description. Be careful about general statements. I have excellent communication skills. No, that's very broad. Be specific. Be prepared to back up every statement on your resume with evidence and examples and to be able to talk about what you wrote in some detail. We don't use I, me, we, or they. Pronouns are out. You have limited space. Every word needs to add value and relate to a specific employer need. You should always save as a PDF and send as a PDF, as Word can take on different formats when it's opened. Just a few things here on formatting, uh, on this example here. Uh, as you can tell, here's Jane Doe. They got, uh, you can take a look at this. It's in the slide deck, but what we see here is inconsistent formatting of dates. Sometimes we have May uh, 616. Uh, we're using too many fonts. As you can tell, there's a lot of fonts right here. We got misspelled words and we got this empty space. Now look at it here. It's much cleaner. Okay. And we understand what is going on. And we'll talk more about these as we move forward, but it's neater, cleaner, more effective use of space, more room for skills and accomplishments. So we're gonna keep coming back to that as we move. Now that we've got the basics down, I wanna walk through suggested formats and sections. The first one I wanna talk about is identification and contact information. 
This should include your name, email, cell phone, and a hyperlink to your LinkedIn pro portfolio. You don't need multiple addresses, or even today, you don't even need one. You want them to contact you. How do people contact you today? Cell phone, email. So that's the first section that your resume should have. Okay, so that's step one. The second part of a resume is what I call credentialing. This is your formal education, your degrees held or expected, licenses and certifications. Let's take a set look at what this should be. At this point in your life, your education goes up top. You shouldn't have anything about high school or community college. High school and community college degrees go into your college. So you're graduating from SUNY Geneseo, all of that builds into it. The focus going forward is now bachelor degree and higher. You should have nothing about colleges attended prior to Geneseo except in rare circumstances. And in that case, you and I would sit down and try to figure them out. Later in life, it's the highest degree first. Master's goes before bachelor's degree, etc. So essentially, the way it looks at a general format is the institution's name, month, year, degree conferred or expected, the degree awarded, and the major field, and a minor, if appropriate, and then your GPA. So let's keep going uh, with this. Here's some examples of what you could have here. State University of New York, College of Geneseo, Bachelor of Science in Accounting, Minor in Finance, 3-3, May 29. Pretty straightforward. All of these things work, okay? Learn how to use full justification so you can put dates on the right and keep them aligned, okay? The alignment becomes important because it communicates that. Tips when we get to education, GPA, don't skip it, okay? You, you got to put it in no matter what it is. What you think is good, what you think is bad is not what an employer may. But if it's not there, I assume it's like a two or less. Only academic information goes in the education section of your resume. Don't include things like gold certificates, workshops, memberships and professional fraternities, etc. Those go in the area that I'll call college activities. Bloomberg certification or an advanced Excel certification can go here. If you studied abroad, and that becomes important, include the information below your degree awarding institution. So here you can see study abroad, fall 2017, St. Andrews University, Scotland. So it's really to identify that you've had that educational experience. So you would put that in. Language skills. Quite, this one is, is, is sort of different to look at. Being multilingual is a major benefit and can be listed under education or under one condition. You must actually be fluent in both. Okay, So if an interviewer turned to that language and started conducting the interview in that language, you need to be able to respond. Completing the language requirement for your degree here at Geneseo does not make you multilingual. It simply gives you an exposure. Professional licenses. If you have a professional license, such as a New York State real estate license, New York State health and life insurance license, Series 6 and 63 license, they should go just below education with a separate section entitled professional licenses. This won't be for everybody, but if you have one of those, you can indicate professional. Many firms are looking for students who can demonstrate professional interest. There's many ways for you to do this. The first, I'm going to talk about a couple of them because I think this becomes important as part of your development. The first is accounting students should be mem student members of either the AICPA or New York State Society CPA. Both have student memberships and provide access to many career resources. You would listen to that as student member of the New York State Society CPAs. Finance students should be Bloomberg certified. Okay, that's almost a critical thing. That's the tool to choose. Uh, marketing students should be members of the American Marketing Association. Students interested in human resources um, should be members of the Society for Human Resources Management. Um, 
students interested in logistics and supply chain should be members of the logistics and supply chain management society so by joining these organizations you're demonstrating a professional interest which is important and and employers are looking for why should you become members one not because I told you so if that's all it is then leave it off don't even put it on your resume you need to be able to articulate why you joined it helps you learn what the profession does emerging issues in the field gives you an opportunity to network and finding the right place for you is about networking this is a volume business you need to talk to a lot of people to find the right place for you understand the skills that are needed in the field to look for career resources if you can articulate all of this in detail then I would consider putting it under education otherwise I wouldn't even put it in okay let's take a, a quick break here before we keep going and say is there a quick way to determine if what I wrote is good yes read every sentence and ask yourself does what I wrote highlight a skill that I possess distinguish me from others and help me stand out make me unique more competitive connect directly to something the employers job posting is looking for if you can't answer yes to these it doesn't belong on your resume well, ask yourself why did you put it there if it doesn't do any of those things it's wasting space and it's not focusing you remember you only have a minute to for someone to look at your resume so don't fill it with with junk check it as you're going the next piece that we have is experiences highlight your experiences experience talks don't confuse skills with something you've done don't confuse skills something you've done well and you can do again in the future with activities what you have done giving a presentation is an activity oral communication is a skill many people want to indicate their profession proficient in Excel most people do that doesn't distinguish you because it's expected of business school graduates when we talk about experience you can show how you've been able to utilize your Excel skills by something you have done you can also do that by getting an advanced Excel certification that would demonstrate it your activities are giving you experience which helps develop skills think about that again your activities give you experience which helps you develop skills okay conducting research on co consumer perceptions is an activity that you happen to do using an Excel worksheet the strongest resume resume statements describe your skill level through a complimentary experience what you have done look at the next one here conducted consumer perception research using Excel pivot tables to support recommendations for an advertising campaign so I've taken something that was very simple what I did the activity and I started putting some details around it. this is where we want to go want you to go with your experiences no matter what they are okay um, your experience is your experience you don't need to break it into different types it doesn't distinguish you work experience other experience it doesn't matter your experience includes jobs internships activities major projects roles you fill in an organization and so on each experience should use an, in the resume should show or demonstrate a skill needs to be sufficient detail that the reader can understand and I think you gotta understand your reader is going to be an educated reader so you don't want to be high level needs to accurately describe what you did but something that you could talk about in an interview and go deeper to explain that skill what skills are we talking about well there's a few skills that most employers are looking for everybody's a little different ability to work in a team ability to make decisions and solve problems this is an important one to come across because in many activities that we engage in we make decisions and solve problems 
ability to plan, organize, and prioritize our, our work. Ability to communicate verbally with people inside and outside the organization at all different levels. The ability to obtain and process information. This comes down that we're in a world of technology. How can you use Excel? How can you extract data from here, take it in Excel, and do something with it? That becomes key. When we move on to some of the others, the ability to analyze quantitative data. How do you do that? Maybe you belong to Smith. Maybe you're in the Fed Challenge. Technical knowledge related to the job. Is this, do I know how to use this tax software? Proficiency with computer software programs. It's a, there's a base expectation that everybody understands Microsoft Office to a proficient degree. Ninth one is ability to create or edit reports. And this becomes important. It's one that many of our skills, many of the skills that I've seen with students don't have this. Your resume is your first step in communicating this skill. And go back to some of the basics. Ability to sell and influence people. So these are some of the key skills. So as you're preparing your resume, I, I would look at these and say, when I list my experience, how can I show these skills? Doesn't mean using the exact words, but telling the story around. Many firms are looking for students who can demonstrate professional interest. There's many ways for you to do this. The first, I'm gonna talk about a couple of them because I think this becomes important as part of your development. The first is accounting students should be mem student members of either the AICPA or New York State Society CPA. Both have student memberships and provide access to many career resources. You would listen to that as student member of the New York State Society CPAs. Finance students should be Bloomberg certified. Okay, that's almost a critical thing. That's the tool to choose. Uh, marketing students should be members of the American Marketing Association. Students interested in human resources uh, should be members of the Society for Human Resources Management. Uh, students interested in logistics and supply chain should be members of the logistics and supply chain management society. So by joining these organizations, you're demonstrating a professional interest, which is important and, and employers are looking for. Why should you become members? One, not because I told you so. If that's all it is, then leave it off. Don't even put it on your resume. You need to be able to articulate why you joined. It helps you learn what the profession does, emerging issues in the field, gives you an opportunity to network. And finding the right place for you is about networking. This is a volume business. You need to talk to a lot of people to find the right place for you. Understand the skills that are needed in the field to look for career resources. If you can articulate all of this in detail, then I would consider putting it under education. Otherwise, I wouldn't even put it in. Okay, let's take a, a quick break here before we keep going and say, is there a quick way to determine if what I wrote is good? Yes, read every sentence and ask yourself, does what I wrote highlight a skill that I possess? Distinguish me from others and help me stand out? Make me unique? more competitive, connect directly to something the employer's job posting is looking for. If you can't answer yes to these, it doesn't belong on your resume. Well, ask yourself, why did you put it there? If it doesn't do any of those things, it's wasting space and it's not focusing. You Remember, you only have a minute to, for someone to look at your resume. So don't fill it with, with junk. Check it as your... Then the next piece that we have is experiences. Highlight your experiences. Experience talks. Don't confuse skills with something you've done. Don't confuse skills, something you've done well and you can do again in the future, with activities, what you have done. Giving a presentation is an activity. Oral communication is a skill. Many people want to indicate their profession proficient in Excel. Most people do. That doesn't distinguish you because it's expected of business school graduates. 
When we talk about experience, you can show how you've been able to utilize your Excel skills by something you have done. You can also do that by getting an advanced Excel certification. That would demonstrate it. Your activities are giving you experience which helps develop skills. Think about that again. Your activities give you experience which helps you develop skills. Okay, Conducting research on co consumer perceptions is an activity that you happen to do using an Excel worksheet. The strongest resume, resume statements describe your skill level through a complimentary experience, what you have done. Look at the next one here. Conducted consumer perception research using Excel pivot tables to support recommendations for an advertising campaign. So I've taken something that was very simple, what I did, the activity, and I started putting some details around. This is where we want to go, want you to go with your experiences, no matter what they are. Okay, um, your experience is your experience. You don't need to break it into different types. It doesn't distinguish you. Work experience, other experience, it doesn't matter. Your experience includes jobs, internships, activities, major projects, roles you fill in an organization, and so on. Each experience should use an, in the resume should show or demonstrate a skill needs to be sufficient detail that the reader can understand. And I think you've got to understand your reader is going to be an educated reader. So you don't want to be high level. Needs to accurately describe what you did, but something that you could talk about in an interview and go deeper to explain that skill. What skills are we talking about? Well, there's a few skills that most employers are looking for. Everybody's a little different. Ability to work in a team. Ability to make decisions and solve problems. This is an important one to come across because in many activities that we engage in, we make decisions and solve problems. Ability to plan, organize, and prioritize our, our work. Ability to communicate verbally with people inside and outside the organization at all different levels. The ability to obtain and process information. This comes down that we're in a world of technology. How can you use Excel? How can you extract data from here, take it in Excel, and do something with it? That becomes key. When we move on to some of the others, the ability to analyze quantitative data. How do you do that? Maybe you belong to Smith. Maybe you're in the Fed Challenge. Technical knowledge related to the job. Is this, do I know how to use this tax software? Proficiency with computer software programs. It's a, there's a base expectation that everybody understands Microsoft Office to a proficient degree. Ninth one is ability to create or edit reports. And this becomes important. It's one that many of our skill, many of the skills that I've seen with students don't have this. Your resume is your first step in communicating this skill. And go back to some of the basics ability to sell and influence people. So these are some of the key skills. So as you're preparing your resume, I, I would look at these and say, when I list my experience, how can I show these skills? Doesn't mean using the exact words, but telling the story. What should I include in experience? The key things that you've done to highlight your skills. You don't need to list everything you've ever done, okay? Don't just describe what you did, but quantify as appropriate or use a specific example. Combine where appropriate in one sentence. Read and reread and reread and rewrite, and then read it out loud. Does it state the obvious, or does it give the reader something meaningful? Okay, some more examples will come up on that. Everything you have done is relevant as different experiences build different skills. The trick is knowing what to choose for the particular resume, which comes back to the job you're applying for. We already said this, don't use any pronouns. If all you did was sat at home and played video games, we got a problem. Okay, let me give you some examples of what I mean. And some of this I'm, I'm not gonna go through. Um, say you worked at Camp Geneseo, you're a summer camp counselor. 
You could say worked at summer camp. Better would be plan, organize, and implement activities for 28-year-old boys in a residential summer camp. So we've taken something that you may see is, is, is really simple, but we're able to bring out this planning and organization. And the reader, even though it may not be in the area of the field you want to go in, it's telling us that you we got a picture. We've quantified it. A reader can say, 28-year-old boys, and oh my God, their mind is, they, they can see that you had to be organized. How did you organize them? That comes through strong. Next line could be resu resu resolve conflicts between campers and maintain a strong connection with parents. So again, we're talking about our communication skills, problem solving. Resolving conflicts is problem solving. If you work for a number of years and supervise junior counselors, you could say supervised five junior counselors. Making it better would say trained and coached five junior counselors. See how we brought in the right adjectives to describe it and relate it to skills. Another one, I worked as a server in a restaurant. My favorite examples, build customer service skills that result in an above average tips. Says it all, everybody goes out. Develop the ability to work six, four tops and maintain great service. And if you've been a service, you know that's not easy. I did a previous internship and just prepared tax returns. No, no, no. Learned how to use amazing tax software and prepared progressively more complex tax returns. By the end of the tax season, completed 50 tax returns. So we've quantified it. We've indicated the software you use, the progression. I did a previous worksheet, I did a previous internship where I did worksheets in models. Utilized Excel macros to import 5,000 data items from Telemet, then develop a model using pivot tables and what-if analysis. So see how we've demonstrated your skill. We've gone deeper so I can understand that. Now you're showing me, not just telling me you did something. Here's a few more examples. Use Microsoft Excel and eMoney software to create a summary of annual returns. Analyze portfolios based on the risk tolerance of clients using Riskalyze to develop solutions based on clients' current financial. You can go back to this. Keep going. Utilize Excel to extract data, build models to analyze firms, and perform valuation scenarios using the discounted cash flow method. So just think about that for a, a second, is now you're talking about something different, something deeper. The last one, develop social media strategies for soft, small companies and demonstrate it increasing customer engagement through Google Analytics, Facebook Analytics. So this is, you're, you're getting more specific, but you're measuring. These are the things that you want to convey. If you worked at Wegmans or Tops or any supermarket, self-driven to meet and exceed monthly sales goal, average day, dollar sale, units per transactions, etc. Enhance the appeal of window and in-store displays through visually visual merchandising techniques. You're telling me this, okay? Prepared functional and economic ad analysis reports for cross-border transactions between entities. You're, you've got a level of specificity, but I'm learning about skills when you do this. Train, coached, and manage the performance of five servers. Assign daily responsibility and communicate goals to staff. Resolve disputes communicated programs and behavioral concerns. These are just some examples of sentences and bullets that can convey a set of skills. What are yours? The next piece is what I'll call college activities. This is a section, right, follows experience. And what you're trying to do is some of your skills you learned and developed by what you did here in Gen C. That can include professional fraternities, the GOLD program, and if you participated in GOLD, and that means more than just two or three classes, I would use this. Participated in X non-credit workshops on leadership, communication, and teamwork, add others if it's important, through the Genesee Opportunities for Leadership program, scholarships. That can go under college activities. What else goes under college activities? I part you participate in a lot of different campus activities. How could I share that? Before we move forward, let's do a little bit of thinking. Do you have room? 
campus and community tabbies are nice, but they should not displace job-related experience or skills. Ask yourself, how are you addressing the employer's need by including the resume? Can they fit? Next thing is, are you sending the right message? Consider what's there and what could be perceived. Okay? Um, and I think you've got to look at it within the context. So by itself, being in a social frat could mean you're a partier. Okay? Uh, that may not be the message you wish to convey. Um, some activities convey information about your personal characteristics, beliefs, or activities. They're not likely to help you, but in fact may hurt you. Let me take a real silly example, is you put down you like snowboarding. Well, that's great, but I'm a skier. And as a skier, I don't like snowboarders. So if I see that, I'm not likely to um, like you, just up front. It's sending the wrong message. Do you have something to show? Don't put something down that you became a member of the club because somebody told you it would look good on a resume. You took some bad advice. Leave it off. You have to be able to do something. Saying you, saying you went to the meetings is not being an active member. What did you do? Okay. And anybody interviewing you is going to ask the same thing. So you need to be able to put sufficient detail in and be able to talk about it. This section you can condense and think very carefully, what's the message that I want to convey? Let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, Phi Kappa Chi fraternity, treasure and new member educate, manage the financial affairs of the fraternity, including cash, dues, and budgeting for 75 members in a 5250 budget. Participated in five fundraising events. You don't need to list all the events, but now I have a picture. So instead of just saying member Phi, Phi Kappa Chi, we now know that you did something, a skill. SUNY Geneseo men's varsity lacrosse team, honored as SUNYAC Rookie of the Year in 16, and organized team community circuits. We're creating a picture. Bad. IBC, International Business Club, member. What'd you do? Marketing club. Attended meetings and learned about marketing crews. Eh. In general, include the activities if you can demonstrate leadership, management skills, financial skills, ability to raise money, accomplishment, or special achievements. When in, a, when in doubt, ask. I'm getting it. Okay, I'm getting it. What do I do next? Create your unique resume that's unique to you and the job you're applying for. Start by identifying the job you'd like. Review the skills that are needed. Lay out the skills that show that you're right for the job. How are you going to communicate your skills? Develop your education component, your experience. Consider activities and opportunities that enhance your value. You need to have value. Read it out loud to yourself and someone else. Review it with me, the dean, your mentors, and others. With, have experience in the field and professional judgment. Continually improve it. So if you're cons reading, listening to this, please create your resume based on the above before you provide it to me. So if you're applying for an accounting or finance internship this fall, I need to review your resume. So get it to me. If you have questions, I'm more than happy to send, spend some time with you, either virtually or in person. Um, but this is about you. Please let me know if you have any questions.